the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Now, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And when he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue became indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath and said to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of my friends accuse me of not being on the cutting edge of popular culture, but I'll tell you, one of the best programs on television today is The Andy Griffith Show. And one of my favorite episodes is called The Visiting Preacher, in which Reverend Tucker comes down from New York and preaches a sermon encouraging everyone to enjoy the Sabbath and take it easy. As happens to some preachers, the people go home and start thinking about what he said. They start reminiscing about the Sabbaths of their childhood and some of the things they did. Someone remembers that Mayberry used to have band concerts on Sunday in the park and so they decide that they should have them again, but not next year or next month or even next week, but that very day. And so begins a flurry of activity that turns the Mayberry Sabbath and Reverend Tucker's sermon on its head. First, the women of Mayberry start to fixing the band's uniforms, which are moth-eaten and in many cases too big and in many other cases too small. The band is, as the Mayberry band usually is, sounding terrible. And the bandstand is to the point of collapse and will need hours of labor just to get it presentable. Before long, the ladies who are working on the uniforms have worked each other's last nerves. And there is screaming and there is shouting and there is crying. There is a battle at the bandstand because time is fleeting and it looks like it will never be repaired. And band practice has broken out into fisticuffs. Nobody seems to be heeding the words of Reverend Tucker and taking it easy. Rather, the whole town is in an uproar. There is a sermon in the dangers of not listening to the preacher, but that is for another day. Today, we're talking about the dangers of trampling the Sabbath. For that is what the good people of Mayberry did, and we do all the time. They were as busy on Sunday as they were during the rest of the week and didn't take any time for themselves, much less for God. Now, it is not my intention for this to be what Dr. M. Craig Barnes calls a bad dog sermon. You know, the kind where the preacher looks at you and scolds you as if you were a bad dog. Because 
We are simply not going to go back to the old days when the stores were closed, and families got together and ate pot roast for supper, and life was simpler. Forget that. We are on overdrive, where the timestamp on Facebook entries and emails is in the middle of the night, and people are talking and texting and Twittering 24-7. Some of us may not want to go back. Dr. Mark Crumpler, one of the pastors at Peachtree Presbyterian Church in Atlanta, very hard to find because it seems that in Atlanta every street is named Peachtree. Crumpler talked about growing up as a son of a Baptist preacher in the South. For him, Sunday meant church. There was Sunday school and church in the morning, something called training unit in the afternoon, and then church again at night. Sunday was all church, all the time. And he said that the words for him, Sunday clothes, meant nothing fun is ever going to happen in this outfit. One of the reasons he also said that he became a Presbyterian pastor instead of a Baptist one was that he said, when I heard you folks only worship once on Sunday and then for an hour, I said to myself, where do I sign up? <laughs> 